And I started yelling and screaming, and uh, a security guard had to come by and rip me out of the escalator and rip me literally out of my shoe. And then they had to fetch my shoe, but it was all torn up by the metal teeth. And uh, they took me to a little room and sat me down in front of the television and gave me a can of Coke. That was like, I don't know, their reward. <laughs> but one of the things that we had in our, we had these escalators in our high school, and what a lot of people don't realize is that in order to prevent you from getting caught in escalators, escalators have a lot of safety mechanisms, okay? Um, one of them being that, you know, if you stick your foot at a 45 degree angle in the escalator between two of the steps, don't ever do this, okay? Uh, the whole escalator will detect that there's pressure on the bottom and it will be and it will shut down immediately. <laughs> and then, if you uh, actually stand at the top of the escalator going with the metal teeth, and if you jump on it, uh, it'll stop. The whole escalator, the escalator will stop. And I went to a, a school for, you know, gifted and talented children, and so we figured out early on how to stop all the back. escalators, and there was this one guy named Bill. Sort of a larger uh, Asian kid. Bill, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to actually jump on the escalators. He just had to do this. <laughs> and the whole escalator would stop. So some days you'd be leaving the 10th floor in my high school and you'd get to the escalator. The escalators would be stopped. You'd be like, oh man, you have to walk down the escalator. And then you get to the 8th floor and then those escalators would stop too. And that's when you just turn to your friend and be like, Bill, man. So one day I was going down one of my high school escalators. I was tired. I took off my backpack and I put it down next to me on an escalator step. Whatever it was in my backpack flipped over and started rolling down the escalator like a slinky. Many steps below stood a girl. She had one hand to her face as if she were on a cell phone. But she had no actual cell phone. We were the only people on the escalator. My backpack kept tumbling and I watched it sort of helplessly as it rolled down and whapped her in the back of the cabs. The girl stopped talking on her fake cell phone and turned to look at me. She had to take that look. I could have been a cute guy who'd thrown my backpack at her to get her to talk to me. She sized me up, cocked her head, and kicked my backpack as hard as she could the rest of the way down the escalator. <laughs> when I reached the bottom, I picked up my backpack and I thought about it for the rest of the day. On the subway ride home, I pulled out a wrinkled piece of paper and I wrote about the cell phone girl in my stupid backpack. I wrote angrily. I used as many curses as possible. Afterward, I felt a lot better. And when I read my words the next day, I felt they were pretty good. So, I went from writing profanity-ridden rants to slightly less profanity-ridden essays. I was able to get some of them published in a local newspaper, New York Press. Soon I was writing on a regular basis, taking my boring, scary, embarrassing high school moments and turning them into something people could read about. It was a real comfort. If something weird or horrible happened to me, I'd write about it. And then somehow I'd be in control, a little bit. A couple years later, I got something published in the New York Times Magazine, and that got me in touch with Free Spirit Publishing, gave me this book contract, which I didn't really understand, but I signed. And now I'm here, writing this introduction after polishing most of what I wrote in high school and organizing it chronologically. I threw out the backpack when I was a junior and replaced it with a bag from the Army Surplus Store. I never did learn the name of the girl. And that's the intro to the book, which uh, I always enjoy reading because it's, it's short, very short. And so when I'm finished reading it, there's always like, a moment of awkward silence and people aren't sure whether they should applaud or not. And uh, I really like awkward silences, so. <laughs> now we can do more awkward silence if you want. Hold on. <laughs> All right, cool. Very good. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, okay. Great. Well, thanks. So that's that's sort of the beginning of the book and kind of a, a little bit of a story of how I got started writing. How many people here are interested in doing writing above and beyond what they make you do in school? Anybody? Yeah, no, raise your hand high. It's important. You're preserving Western's thought. Excellent. Okay, good job. Good job. Great, great, great. So before we, uh, before we go forward, does anyone here have any questions that are related to...